This episode will be completely taken out of context. Welcome to the Fact Check This podcast. All right, so a big part of me <clears throat> had no intention of actually addressing this sort of stuff because why would I? I don't, it's, it doesn't, I've, I've, I've stayed out of it for the most part, but at the same time, I also have the benefit of a listenership of about 12 people, so I can say whatever I want, and it doesn't matter because nobody's going to hear it that even cares. So I am going to, to some extent, address the ignorance that was the whole Liberty Lockdown episode 100 and everything that's kind of come out of that. And I'm not going to talk about the, like the more inflammatory stuff that was said specifically by them and Matt about Dave, but more so I want to look at this, this Mises GOP idea and some of, I don't know, what I view as the insanity of that whole thing. Because, like, I've, I've talked about it before. I come from having been a Republican. And I, I don't understand how anybody who's promoting this idea of liberty GOP has any actual grasp of how this two-party system works and what that party does specifically what the GOP does. So so for one, just to just to knock it right off the top, the Dave and Ben Matt thing, I don't understand why Dave wastes time with that. It it's punching down for him. Like he has a platform already that is significantly bigger than both of theirs combined. I mean, for as much as Vin can talk about his time doing the the Showtime show, like, that doesn't afford him some massive platform for the message that he's getting out or trying to get out right now. Like that, that stuff just kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So why would Dave continue to punch down at these guys is beyond me. Uh, so that's it. But that's literally all I intended to say about that. So getting to the main topic and looking at this whole Liberty GOP, Mises GOP, the whole idea of, of all of that. I'm, Republicans are not about liberty. They're not about freedom. They don't care about any of that stuff. They, I'm from Kentucky where we have Mitch McConnell who is very possibly the worst senator in the country. Like, there, is nothing, there is nothing about him that is freedom or liberty or small government. He is strictly opposed Democrats while being mostly a Democrat. So why would anybody think that the GOP or the RNC stand for anything other than what their figurehead, Mitch McConnell, and his ilk are all about. Here in Indiana, very similar. The GOP, the Republicans here in Indiana, they're not about freedom, liberty, any of that stuff. They're about what keeps them in power and what makes them the most money. And, and that's really it. Like They are just politicians they are not they don't care about the people other than themselves and this whole idea that there's going to be some like liberty movement within the gop that's going to take over and that using the libertarian party for that is a waste of time is insane the libertarian party is the only way that you achieve that the gop allows people like Rand Paul and Thomas Massey and Matt Getz to exist because it appeases that fringe group of the Republican Party and keeps them from leaving. It gives them that sliver of hope that they might be accomplishing something. When at the end of the day, if 
that is not beneficial to the party anymore, they will snuff that fucking thing out as quick as they can. It's like, the idea that you're going to have this liberty movement within the GOP and that that's just going to take over and you're going to change anything. The only change that the GOP allows to happen is that which is beneficial to them. If, if Matt Erickson's assertion that it's not that liberty is something people don't know about, it's that it's something that people know about and they don't want, why would the GOP allow that? How would trying to have a Mises liberty caucus within the GOP work. Because if, if, if you're right, if that is something that people know about and don't want, then you can bet your ass the GOP doesn't want it. And they'll allow it to exist to the extent that it behooves them to allow it to exist. And then when they don't need it, they get rid of it. What it really feels like with this whole anti-Mises caucus in the Libertarian Party thing that seems to be going on is that Republicans have figured out that the Mises caucus is going to steal their members because a lot of Republicans have figured out that the GOP does not stand for liberty, does not stand for freedom, does not stand for smaller government or ending wars or drug or, you know, criminal justice reform, or literally anything. The GOP does not fucking care about any of that stuff. They only care about remaining in power and making more money. That's it. And there is a significant portion of their contingency, their constituency, that has figured that out. And they see the Libertarian Party Mises Caucus as coming out as the thing that actually represents that. And so these Republicans know they're about to start losing support and members in droves to that caucus. And it's not going to result in libertarians winning. It's just going to result in the Republicans losing. And that's the thing that they care about. That's the only thing that they care about. They want to maintain their power at whatever cost. And once they start to lose that support of the people who do believe in liberty and freedom and smaller government, because the Republicans have not stood for that for 40 years, they start to lose. And I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if Republicans lose. Are Republicans minutely better than Democrats for the most part? Sure. Do I give a shit if the Republicans lose and the Democrats are in control? Not a little bit. If the Republicans wanted to keep the support of people who actually believe in freedom and liberty and smaller government, they should have been fucking better. That's all there is to it. They should have been better. And if they lose, it's their own goddamn fault. They deserve it. You get what you deserve in politics. And maybe because I'm more of a collapsitarian than anything, and anarchy runs vividly through my veins, I want to see the Democrats win. Because they are going to implode on themselves and they are going to implode everything that they touch. So I am a bit of a uh, accelerationist where that's concerned. I don't want to see a post-libertarian world. I want to see a 
post-democracy world. I don't know what that looks like. That's got to be better than this. And for a while, it may not be. And I'm prepared for that. And it, see, that's I think that is the fear. Because the whole make more money idea, that's all well and good. I don't need to make more money. What I need is to get the tiller running and make more farm in my backyard. See, I don't need more money. I don't need any of this bullshit. I, unlike a, I'd say 99% of this country, I can actually take care of myself. I can actually fend for myself. If I didn't have a mortgage payment, I wouldn't fucking go to work. I don't need your bullshit society. I can take care of myself. I can grow my garden. I can hunt. I can make my own bread. I know how to do these things. I can, if necessary, be completely self-sufficient. And that's the big fear of those who <clears throat> don't want to see a... <clears throat> Lauren Zodding, help me. That's the big fear of those who don't want to see a post-democracy world. It's not that they're scared of anarchy. It's not that they're scared that if there isn't a system in place that nobody will take care of the poor and nobody will take care of the sick and who will build the roads and there won't be a police force and blah 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 it's that they're scared because they know they can't take care of themselves they need somebody to do that for them they need walmart they need kroger they need for all of that to be put at their fingertips so they can just go get it. So they don't have to figure it out for themselves. And that's, that is the shame with our society is that we've reached that point. Those are my thoughts for what they're worth. This will go out as a bonus episode. Uh, be sure to tune back in on uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we'll have the regularly scheduled episode with Alo Axelman, who has uh, a couple books that you can find on Amazon, and we talk all about that. So check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Have a good one.